formatting the home page using entirely CSS. Uh, so there's no HTML formatting this page now. We took it all out. So we took out the font tag and we took out the BG color for this table cell. And also uh, we took out the blank table cells that were 40 pixels wide that shoved this thing in. So instead of that we made a, um, a style <coughs> that uh, sets the left indent for the entire page to 40 pixels. <coughs> And all of the styles are contained in the um, style sheet called stagestyles.css and uh, ultimately every page in the website will be linked back to that uh, formatting style sheet. So it means that all of your formatting is centralized and happens in one sheet instead of, if you like, decentralized, like what they try to do with the civil service by putting them in um, you know, different counties around the country. Uh, in in uh, HTML, formatting is decentralized because the formatting happens on every single page, uh, which then makes it really difficult to edit the formatting because you have to go and change it in every single page. Whereas in CSS, the formatting is centralized, it's in one place. If you change the formatting in one place, it'll fix in all the other sheets. Um, and just speaking of all matters of government, I suppose all of you guys heard about our illustrious Angus O'Snally spending 53,000 yeah. euros oh. on printer cartridges over two years. Martin Hindo has a minute. Yeah, yeah. 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 Martin Hindo. Because he sees it, he's closing. He's only there. I know they were calling her on the um, RT. They were calling her on the phone or gate. Phone or gate. And is there anybody else in there spending that much money on the yard to just think? I think it's Shane Feynman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let's just have a first look at the style sheet. This is the style sheet here. It's called estate style.css. It has a .css um, extension. Anybody remember what CSS stands for? Cascading style sheet, yeah. Um, so just to remind you about styles, uh, CSS style has a name. Uh, you can um, name it whatever you want. It has to start with a full stop. Then it has curly brackets, opening and closing. And can anybody remember what this is called? It's a something, something, something. Uh, property values. Some property value pair. Yeah, so you name the property, font value, and then you assign, font, font value I should say, and then you assign the value to an area. So here we're assigning the value CCCC00 to the property color. Um, so that's defining this letter here, the letter S. So it's Arial, it's that's what CC, CC00 looks like. Remember, it's an RGB code. The first two letters you meant red, this you meant green, this you meant blue. Um, the third thing is that it's 48 pixels in size, and you have much more control over the size of fonts in CSS. In the font tag, it only goes from 1 to 7, 7 being the biggest. And finally, the font weight is bold. So that's that there. Um, then this style is everything else. It's exactly the same, and all I did was I copied and pasted it, and all I, I just changed one thing and made it white. Those styles are then applied using span tags. Anybody? I had it at the board, I didn't find it. Um, okay, um, so how do we apply that then um, when you're applying a style and you don't want to have any uh, breaks, line breaks?
regularly used in span, in tag, in HTML. So the, the formatting happens in CSS, but the bit where you say this is where I want to apply the format, that's done in HTML. So if we look at the um, code for this, let's have to use source. Here we have um, span class is equal to first letter S. So the letter S has been closed in span tags. And then this um, attribute here, the class attribute, applies to a style called first letter. The reason I've used span tags is that if you use a div tag or a paragraph tag, it will show it on to the next line. Then we have <coughs> span class is equal to remaining letters, and there you can see that. The text other is inside of that, so that's applying the style called remaining letters um, to the text other. So um, this whole thing here is that text other state agents, and there's a whole lot of less um, code than there was when we were doing in HTML, so it's easier to manage uh, than HTML. Then this bit here, TD Cosman, um, you can add the class attribute to any HTML. Tag, opening tag, so because we've added it to the TD tag, it's going to apply to the table set. And the class is equal to heading background, and if we go and have a look at heading background, there it is there. There's the spell for heading background, it's just saying background color is 990000, um, and that puts it to a kind of a red type of style. Um, then we've set the property for all the text in the TD tags, and that because everything in the page is on a TD tag, it affects the text in the entire page. So it's for Dana, 14 pixels black. <coughs> so all of this text here is for Dana, 14 pixels black. And in the previous version of this, we had to use opening and closing font tags for every single one of those um, table cells. But now we don't need to format it at all. All we have to do is type in the text. So this, this text here, we have a wide selection of properties on offer. It's not actually in between any span tags. There's no class there, but it's getting it from the TD tag. And just remember, there are two ways of setting up a style. You can name a style. This style is called first letter. And if you do that, then you have to decide when to apply the style. <coughs> but if you apply a style to a tag, so here we've named the TD tag, and when you do that, you don't start with full stop. It means that every time I use the TD tag, the style will be applied. Um, and that's fine if you want to, if you want to consistently throughout the page. Um, with other things like dot first letter, where it's only applied in you know three places throughout the page, that's what I've said as a class style. And then the last style on this um, page is the one defining this text here. And that is called heading text, I think. No, it's called subheadings. So aerial bold, 16 pixels, 99000. So that's the same color as background color. It's a good idea in a website to have kind of replication of colors throughout the page. It makes the appearance of the page stronger. And then the last thing we did was we indented the page from the left, which is much easier to do in CSS. We set a um, style for the body tag. When you set a style for the body tag, it affects everything. And we just said margin left, left 40 pixels. And because it, every page in the website is now going to be linked to the style sheet, it means that everything will automatically be indented from the left 40 pixels. So if you look at the other, um, page <coughs> property details that is also indented for things from the left because it's linked to the style and if I go and change the style and this is kind of the power of style sheets just make it a hundred pixels and refresh this so it jumps in a hundred it jumps in an extra 60 pixels but this one also jumps in an extra because they're all linked back to the space size. Did the right hand side not jump at the same time? Or was that one hand?
Okay, if we look at the table. Must be index now. Index right. The table is 100 percent. So. Tape width is 100 percent so that should be going to the edge of the page, so I'm not too sure what's going on there. Table width is, it seems to be that the margin is actually affecting both <coughs> sides of the page, even though it's less by margin than the left. And maybe, maybe I need to put in margin right zero. set margin left and um, unless you specify margin right being zero pixel I wouldn't know so unless you point to the left um, because the table is supposed to be hundred percent. But um, so we we'll try that thing change it again. So we make this a hundred save that press that. So this time it like it jumped across but the, the right hand side didn't jump across. But it's funny, like you can see that with um, CSS, it's much easier to kind of adjust things and see how things change. I, I actually thought it was better with a, a margin on the right as well. So not you thought, but let's just <coughs> try that. So we will make this 40 pixels left margin and 40 pixels right margin. And see what that looks like. Because I've um, put that in the body tag, it will affect everything. So it automatically affects that as well. It's very um, hard. Just one other thing to revise before we go on to uh, what we're today is that it's very important to have comments. And I even noticed myself that when I was uh, briefed with this before I <coughs> left yesterday, so I would have an idea of what I was doing today, that already there's a lot of styles this style sheet and it becomes quite difficult to just try and remember what was I doing there or what style is that. So it's very important just to get into the habit of always putting in comments for your styles and the way you put a comment in CSS forward slash star and then star forward slash. The stars are always on the inside that's the way that I remember it. Getting it the way around doesn't work. And just a brief description of what the style is doing. I think those descriptions are a bit short. It defines the style for the first letter of each word and for states on this day. It's probably put in a little bit more. Um, but it'll help you later on as your style sheet gets more and more complicated to just try and figure out what you're doing. So that's just a brief review of what we've done in styles so far. So we've styled this um, page with CSS. So there's no HTML format on this page now. And we've started styling this page last week. So I just <coughs> about all the formatting. Um, there's no, there's nothing in this page that says <coughs> to make the text um, Verdana, but it's getting that formatting from. Let me just say more. It's getting that formatting from the style sheet because every time you use the TV tag, it automatically formats the text like that. So in the, like it was interesting when I was deleting the code for the HTML. I thought there's an awful lot of code to delete every. Single table style had fonts, space is equal to area, size is equal to four, color is equal to whatever. But now I don't need that anymore because simply using the TV tag links back to this style here, so it fits it all automatically. So I mean, automatically cuts down on the amount of uh, code in uh, this page. So that's where we're at. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, just before you start something new. Um, you can go back to the home page for a second. Mm -hmm. um, last week you were, um, you were saying there's a table between the picture mm -hmm. and the text on the right of it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to try and take that out and use the margin. Yeah. 
So we continue, um, so I suppose what we're doing is we're using CSS for formatting, eventually we'll be using CSS for page positioning as well, so Coral HTML is, is being um, remoted big time. We started last week, um, we set up three styles, one for this shade here, kind of a light grey, then this is kind of a charcoal colour, and then this is a lighter grey. We set up three styles and we applied them using the TR flags, I think. Um, actually, in the previous, um, just on another page. In this table here, let's have a look at the code. <coughs> so here's a table here. Um, typical mortgage repayments. That's that text there. And if we look at this entire row here, so firstly, you have to put in the blank row at the beginning, the blank cell at the beginning of every row, you know, you don't have to do that in CSS. But because the uh, because it's a blank cell, we can't put the background colour into the TR tag, because that would colour in the background of the blank cell as well, which leads to an awful lot of code. So you have to have BG colour in every single TD tag, which is inefficient. When you're <coughs> using CSS, because there's no blank um, cell here, we, we can put the code into the TR tag, which just cuts down on so much code. So if we just look at how we did that. Here we have properties available in Dunleary and Applying that style there, TR classic with black background, that colors in that row there, properties available. And then uh, the next one, location. That is TR classic to light gray. And then after that, every second row is colored in. skips a row, so there's no colouring in this row, and then we have another one here, TR classic and light grey. So that's where I have those two rows coloured in light grey. What I need to do now is make um, styles for the text properties available at Dunleary and text location. And I just filled it up on the board there. The first one is aerial size equal to four, <coughs> size equal four in, in font, so we have to find the equivalent size for that. CSS, and then the color is CC, CC00. We just start off by making a style for that. Everybody know where I'm at at this stage? Yeah, happy enough. Just stop me if it's getting confusing. So let's just see what we call this. Uh, so it's probably as available in Dunleary, so I, I just call this uh, <coughs> area text. Or no, maybe I'll just call it properties available text. <coughs> Family. Remember, you 
don't need to use conversion commas CSS. Next thing is that we have to find an equivalent um, size to four. So I don't know what that is. Uh, let's try font size. I think three is like equivalent to twelve in you know font size twelve. So let's try sixteen pixels. No change but it doesn't work. And then the last thing is color. Can be a bit confusing, it's not font color, it's just color. You get to remember that after a while. And unlike HTML, you don't need inverted commas, so it's just hash cc cc zero zero. And remember to put in the semicolon at the end. If you leave one of those out, it won't work. You can save that. Because I've named this style dot properties available text, I need to apply it using a class. So now uh, the second thing on the board, that's Arial and it's white. Let's just call that location text. Okay, so the first thing is that it's Arial. saying uh, classly properties available text down here I have to say um, okay alright all right. Hmm. I'm just thinking here because I've never done this before um, I could apply the style by putting classly to location text in each one of the three TD tags but I think it should also work by just putting it in to the TR tag which means that I have two classes in the TR tag. I'm not too sure if you're allowed to do that or not, but let's see. Um, CSS is much more strict in its rules than HTML, and HTML you can kind of get away with anything. But in CSS, it, it has pretty, pretty um, formal rules. So I put it in the TR tag, which I'm saying to put in three in the TD tag, so let's just see if it works. Let you have two classes in one, and um, you can only have one class assigned to a particular tag. So, therefore, oh, I have to get it out of there and then put it in each of the three 3D tags.
that's the, the first um, batch of it done. And now that like, we've done it, it should be relatively easy to do the other one. So we've just spent a bit of time doing that. I've got rid of all the formatting, so it'll only take a second. So I'll colour in the backgrounds first. So we have three different styles for the background colours, just to remind ourselves and myself what they are. Okay, well that one there is, we don't need that, that's the, the wine coloured one. Yeah. So there's the first thing I need, dark grey and then light grey and then black <coughs> background. So the, the sequence of them is a bit confusing actually. So you see there that there's a dark grey and then there's a black background and then there's a light grey. So it would make it easier for me to understand it. I had it in that sequence in the code. Um, so dark grey, and then the second one is black background, so I'm just going to put that out there. I'll put it in there. Um, and just to help myself, um, this is the benefit of comments. to apply this um, font and then this font and I have to do it in each TD tag and as I've done it already I can just go back and copy it. Oops. <coughs> I made there, by the way. I should put that in the TR tag because it won't let you have. If I put in this class, it's equal to proper available text. It won't let me do that because it won't let you have two classes in one set. And if I save this, it won't work. working when I refresh this, this would be yellow, which it is, and that's because I put two classes into the same tag, which won't let you do that. So where should I put this instead? TR tag. Yeah, in the TR tag. Text. So there's my um, three headings, and because I already have a 
class in TR type. I can't put that location text in there, so I have to put the class in each one of the TV types. And once you've done it once, you can copy it. the properties available in text, so I'll just type it in, otherwise it's too quick. Yeah, put it here. I'll do the background colors first. Class is equal to dark gray. Okay. Yeah. And then the other one was class equal to black background that it was. Two more things to do. Put in the uh, property for that. Bear in mind, I have to put in the TD tag because I already have a class in the TR tag. And then properties for location, property set, and text, and price, each of which has to go into the TD tag also. But it will say that. Um, and those, just to, to remind ourselves, um, it's properties available, text, and location text. There are two styles of applying. So here's the properties available. I can't put in the TR tag because I already have a style in there, so that's going to the TD tag. I think it's better, by the way, if you make changes like this to make one change and save it and then check it. So it's easier to find mistakes that way. Whereas I'm putting in a number of changes and then checking it. And I, I think it's okay to do that when you're more confident, but sometimes when you go too, too quickly, like I'm doing now, you end up making mistakes. I think we've got away with it so far, but when you say that, that's the case of that, isn't it? I'll have to see if that works. That's the, uh, I think we haven't formatted the marquee though. That's the marquee without any formatting. We've already made a style for the marquee in this, for the home page, and it's in here. So we just remind ourselves what that is. Up here somewhere. <coughs> there we go. And look, there's the advantage of having a, a comment. Because I've named the style without subheading, so unless I had the comment there, I could easily have missed the fact that that's for the marquee text. So I have to type this stuff for the marquee text dot subheadings. So the first we need to find the marquee text there is there. And uh, marquee is in a table. So let's see if we can apply it either by putting the class in the marquee tag or the table uh, cell. Let's see if it works both ways. So firstly we'll just try it in the table tag. Class is equal to Subheadings. Good net. Yeah. Save that. And refresh. So it 
does work when you put the class in the TD tag. It probably makes more sense to put the class in the marquee tag. Let's just do that. body, margin left and margin right, that's what was controlling the margins. But I just had it like that, margin left. Save that. And I had notes that Anthony pointed out there's also a margin on the right, even though I haven't saved I want the margin on the right. So if you want to get rid of the margin on the right, you have to put in margin right zero pixels. So that if you don't have that, by putting in the margin left of 40 pixels, it also sticks on the right of 40 pixels. But um, it's funny, like having seen that now, I think it looks better the other way. It looks like less crowded, so I actually prefer it the other way. So I'm going to put a margin right of 40 pixels. And there we go. And because that's um, in the style sheet, that's a that will affect everything, so uh, it affects the home page and it affects that page when I make the change. Um, I don't know what it is, and I, I can't put my finger on it, but I think when you do the formatting in CSS, it just looks a little bit stronger or something. Did, that, did anybody get that impression? Maybe it's the way that this text looks. Um, I think it's just the formatting just looks a little bit cleaner or something in um, CSS. this off today. I know there's a lot of listening and less questioning, so it's probably more difficult for you guys to um, concentrate. Is this okay? Is this, yeah. um, I'd like to get to the stage at the end of the lecture today where we can change, where we have everything in CSS, um, and then we can see the effects of changing the slides. We have effects at the 